1 Peter chapter 2 verse 5 He also as lively stone a built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ Ye also there were sacrifices in the Old Testament Jesus became our sacrifice Ye also Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ where our brother Ivaraj was helping me with a design for the banner spiritual sacrifices he had a wonderful theme probably worked out with our brother Vinod based on the passage we had a reading for this morning the sacrifices in the Old Testament and Jesus became our sacrifice he had the a concept brought out of this passage and in his design he wanted to show the Old Testament sacrifice and Jesus our sacrifice and uh, Everaj told me I brought these two things together these two sacrifices I said Everaj I'm sorry I'm going to talk about the third sacrifice I'm going to talk about the third sacrifice not the Old Testament sacrifice now Jesus died as a sacrifice on the cross a third sacrifice he asked me what's the third sacrifice here in 2 Peter we read ye also ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices we also have to offer uh, literally we also have to sacrifice sacrifices the literal rendering we also have to sacrifice sacrifices in the Old Testament it was a physical sacrifice it was a shadow and the physical sacrifice became a substance when the body of Jesus Christ was crucified on the cross in the Old Testament it was a shadow when Jesus died it was a substance and both were physical sacrifices we also have to sacrifice spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ acceptable to God by Jesus Christ so Jesus Christ we are also priests and Jesus Christ as a priest and it is acceptable to God by Jesus Christ so what do you mean by acceptable to God in the physical sacrifice when it was a shadow in the Old Testament that lamb that was offered must be with no blemish with no blemish it can't be blind it can't be lame it can't be sick it should be young it can't be old so the, uh, the 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 high priest or the efficient priest they will measure it they will have a rod to measure it they'll make sure that it is ready to climb on the altar balibedathil yeratakka whether that lamb can go to the altar every lamb cannot be sent to the altar that should pass through the rod before that lamb can go to the altar so just for a physical sacrifice which was even a shadow they have to make sure that lamb was with no blemish 
that was acceptable to God when it was sacrificed by the high priest or by the pre efficient priest. And the substance of that sacrifice was Jesus Christ. In the Old Testament, the lamb that was to be sacrificed must be tested for three days. Must be tested for three days. The Passover lamb, whether there is any blemish in it or not, whether it was sick or not. So only on the fourth day, that is by the time three and a half days passed by, the fourth day that lamb will be offered. It is tested and proved it was with no blemish. So when it became a substance in Jesus Christ, for three years, he was tested and proven there was no blemish in him. The man who betrayed Jesus Christ, he said there was no blemish in him. There are seven testimonies. Pilate said, Pilate's wife said, Herod said, the, uh, the malefactor by his side said, the centurion said, and Jesus himself said, can you find any fault in me? That lamb was tested and proven for three and a half years. And that lamb became a sacrifice. That lamb uh, was taken to the altar, that's the cross. He was tested and proved. Those two were physical sacrifices. One was a, sub a shadow and the other was a substance. And we also become spiritual sacrifices. We should be tested and proven. Before we could go to the altar. And this sacrifice was sacrificed by Jesus Christ acceptable to God. It is acceptable to God. What do we mean by a sacrifice? Sacrifice, sacrifice, the literal meaning is slaughter. Slaughter. Whether for a religious connotation or not, even for a feast, family feast, after Jacob met Esau and his people, so Jacob, the enmity was broken. So Jacob sacrificed a sacrifice and they all ate. Uh, generally we understand, okay, it was a sacrifice to the Lord. No. The literal meaning, he slaughtered an animal. And he gave a feast to his brethren. So sacrifice literally meaning slaughtering. Slaughtering. We hear about slaughterhouse. What is slaughtering? What is the difference between killing and slaughtering? Killing may have a negative connotation. Slaughtering may have positive con connotation. We don't kill an animal in the slaughterhouse for the very purpose of killing it or to destroy it. In the slaughterhouse an animal is killed to give food to many people. The government has permitted, they check the animal they put the stamp whether the animal is sick or not, whether it will spread any disease or not. Then the animal is killed in the slaughterhouse. So slaughtering has got a purpose. In slaughtering, the blood is shed. Slaughtering has got a very deep meaning. The blood is shed and the skin must be removed. It should be skin. And the flesh is used. The flesh with bones is used or used. That is slaughtering. And when we say sacrifice, maybe in particular, slaughtering for a divine purpose. 
the tamil meaning bali it's giving food to god it's giving food to god but in bible when we say sacrifice it's not giving food to god it is to make an atonement to appease god to fulfill god's requirement god's requirement we don't read in the bible that god eats that food is not a padayal but that bali has got a connotation of padayal here that bali is very painful an animal is killed for a good purpose or a divine purpose and it should be skinned its flesh should be cut into pieces and it should be used burnt or cooked my dear brother my dear sister as there are many sacrifices in the shadow sin offering offering and sacrifice it's the one and the same word but in the translation they use that word offering sin sacrifice a uh, transgression sacrifice peace sacrifice free will sacrifice bring sacrifice meat sacrifice there are different sacrifices and all these sacrifices are fulfilled in jesus sacrifice in all his totality all these sacrifices were fulfilled in jesus christ whether sin offering or transgression offering a burnt offering whatever that offering may be all those sacrifices are fulfilled in jesus christ but the bible says you also offer sacrifices what is that what are those sacrifices they are spiritual sacrifices i love to draw your attention to the uh, plurality of that word spiritual sacrifices sacrifices acceptable to god what do you mean by sacrifices acceptable to god we cannot draw nearer to god we cannot make an atonement with god without these sacrifices so i want to show you from the new testament what are the spiritual sacrifices the spiritual sacrifices we must offer these sacrifices and these sacrifices must be accept, acceptable to god and these sacrifices must be by jesus christ number 1 you can just make a note of these points number 1 philippians 2:17 yea and if i be offered upon the sacrifice and service of your faith i joy and rejoice with you all and if i be offered upon the sacrifice and service of your faith uh i don't know how many of you can easily understand this language number 1 your faith our faith faith of the church is a sacrifice faith of the church is a sacrifice is on the altar the apostle is the drink offering the drink offering that is poured forth on the sacrifice so the apostle is poured forth on the sacrifice so paul says if i be offered upon the sacrifice that paul's ministry is poured forth on the sacrifice what is that sacrifice you have faith you have faith so you what do we mean by your faith this faith is not just believing jesus christ your faith means 
இவ ரிலீஜியஸ் லைஃப் இவ கிறிஸ்டியன் வாக் இவ கிறிஸ்டியன் வாக் இஸ் அ சாக்ரிஃபைஸ் and the servant of god is poured forth on your sacrifice he gives his life he pours out his life for you to have a christian walk for you to have a christian walk the faith doesn't mean that i believe in jesus that faith unga viswasa walkai ஆ யுவர் கிறிஸ்டியன் வாக் உங்கள் கிறிஸ்தவ நடக்கை உங்கள் கிறிஸ்தவ நடக்கை இஸ் அ சாக்ரிஃபைஸ் அண்ட் த சர்வெண்ட் ஆஃப் காட் இஸ் போர்ட் ஃபோர்த் ஆன் தட் சாக்ரிஃபைஸ் தட் சாக்ரிஃபைஸ் இஸ் அக்செப்டபிள் டு காட் பை ஜீசஸ் கிரைஸ்ட் பை ஜீசஸ் கிரைஸ்ட் வாட் யூ வாட் யூ மீன் பை அ கிறிஸ்டியன் வாக் சே ஃபார் எக்ஸாம்பிள் திஸ் மார்னிங் ஐ செட் ஆனர் ப்ரேயர் டைம் வென் தெர் இஸ் அ கார்பரேட் ப்ரேயர் on a prayer time for your christian walk i am offered somebody might have been hurt that's a sacrifice somebody might have been skinned that is the sacrifice you are cut into pieces and it's painful to the servant of god he is offered on that sacrifice but if that sacrifice can be acceptable to god paul says i i i i, jo- I rejoice in it uh, paul says uh, if that is acceptable to god i joy i'm happy i'm happy when this congregation learns to honor prayer when the when the volunteers learn to honor prayer my dear brother my dear sister in the weapons of the light what we should honor we should honor what we should honor we should honor that's the weapon of light the last 15th uh can be vivek and be epta they were with me be at and be sam also there we went to the trichy meet went to the trichy meet as we were entering in we were before our scheduled time and they are closing with their first, uh, first part of the program as we moved into the gate they started singing national anthem as soon as i heard that national anthem just i stood still and i do i i think it was vivek with me may he stood still it is honoring it is honoring just on the middle not an inch we could move my dear brother my dear sister yesterday there was a news a last week it was planned that all children in all schools in india at one time the national anthem should be played and all children should respect the national anthem one time all over india it's a beautiful it's a beautiful suggestion so there was a program in pondicherry in that pro- program the chief minister of pondicherry participated when the national anthem was sung it was a beautiful scene everybody was standing and the chief minister and the ministers the cabinet ministers all are stand it was a very lovely scene so there may be tv crew people and others were taking that scene they are they are assigned for taking the scene but a minister who was showing respect to the national anthem all of us are maybe out of enthusiasm he took his phone and took a selfie he took his phone and took a selfie a criminal case is filed against that minister and the minister is absconded anybody knows the news only one person two yesterday yesterday 
if there can be a criminal charge against a minister who failed to honor the national anthem i ask a question those who don't honor a prayer time will they be spared will they be spared just think about a minute my dear brother my dear sister if there is something very urgent, our god is a god of mercy something very urgent to be done somebody is falling oh it's prayer i am not going to help them no jesus said mercy is very important but just because of my negligence i use the prayer time to do all my work will god spare will god spare when you can neglect a national anthem a minister a minister who was standing next to the chief minister very next to the chief minister number 2 in the cabinet nation is first and our kingdom for me our kingdom is greater than anything else i love to honor my nation i don't want anybody to disrespect god's kingdom i want to honor my nation so you a christian walk it's a sacrifice it may be painful every sacrifice would be painful without pain you cannot give a sacrifice to be in time it's painful the other day when we visited the house i was able to see how painful it was for them they work all through the night to get ready their children the commitment that sister decided whether the husband comes or not the children are ready and i will be there in time it is painful our hearts are broken when we are listening to these type of testimonies but you can't become a sacrifice to the lord a sacrifice acceptable to the lord without pain without shedding the blood without making a sacrifice at the aham that's why we also use the word sacrifice for the aham the aham without making an extra effort your christian life cannot be successful the first spiritual sacrifice is your faith and the servant of his god servant of god is offered on your christian walk they take a lot of pain not in every church not every apostle i say not every servant of god not every pastor if somebody is satisfied with your offering somebody is satisfied with your uh, your ties and your money somebody is satisfied with your attendance somebody is satisfied with a number game 100% they are not going to make your sacrifice they are not going to teach you to be a sacrifice they are not going to compel you to go to the altar they will not cut you they will not skin you they will not be poured forth on this sacrifice my dear brother my dear sister if that could be that could be painful to somebody i'm happy about it that you could become a sacrifice acceptable to the law you are christian walk when i say christian walk i mean you are dress you are lifestyle not lying even a small thing in a small thing some people are too wise to lie they are uh, not i say uh, so wise they just make a lie for the wrong thing what they do they give a different reason and they also want to do ministry they want to be in the choir they want to do this they want to do that it's very very painful very painful for a small thing if you are getting late why are you late this is the reason that reason was absolute lie that reason was absolute lie and you want to do ministry how can we have a christian walk 
I was late because I was sitting and chatting with so and so, that's why I'm late. That ends the matter. Why do you lie? My dear, it's very painful to us. All liars will go to hell. All liars will go to hell. Let me repeat it. All liars will go to hell, whatever the lie may be. Giving a, a, a type of a diff... I, I always say, lie is not in what you say, what you communicate, what you make others believe. You may be very wise. You may be very wise. You may make me believe one thing. You may tell me, you may tell me something that I could believe a different thing, but there is hidden something inside. You are a liar. You are a liar. You are making me believe a lie. I abhor it. God abhors it. That cannot be, that life cannot be a sacrifice to the Lord. That cannot be a lamb ready to climb on the altar. You should be a lamb without blemish. How can the Lord accept us if there is lies in our life? When I got saved, maybe the beginning of the days, I still remember Pastor Frank Simon. Maybe in one or two months since I got saved, it was, it was Pastor Frank Simon who made, uh, made me understand this principle. From that day till this day, I always I may speak truth and there may be a problem because of that. But I don't want to speak a lie or I want, don't want to communicate a lie in such a good manner. Pastor Frank Simon, a great man of God, some of you might have heard about him. Pastor Frank Simon said once, it was the day that I got saved. He said, lie is not what you say. Lie is not what you say. Lie is what you make others believe. Lies what you make others believe. I tell you openly what was the problem. When I got saved, I used to fast. And we never had an occasion to speak back to our parents. We never had an occasion to speak back to our parents. So my father, when he would come home, he would ask me, Saptiya Raja, very lovingly he used to ask me, Saptiya Raja. I immediately, yes, daddy. That was the lie I was making. I was making my father believe that I had my lunch, I had my breakfast, mostly for my dinner. My mother knew that I was fasting. If my father says, in the fasting, I will fast for 10 days, my father may not know it. I was lying. But I didn't speak lie. Chapter and daddy. I knew very well. I had it. I had it earlier. I remember I wept when Pastor Frank Simon said, Lie is not what you say, lie is what you make others believe. I'm in the presence of God. If I'm wrong, God should forgive me. My memory is right. From that time, I have never spoken very wisely a type of a false truth to make others believe a lie. Your sacrifice must be acceptable to the Lord. Your Christian walk, your religious life. And uh, Paul, or the writings of the scriptures, or today the servant of God, is poured forth on your sacrifice. On your sacrifice. That should be acceptable to the Lord. That should be accepted. That's how we have been trained. I remember one incident. In the early days of ACA, one of the uh, workers, he was sent to a house in Perambu or somewhere there. On the way back, He visited a house in the Ainavara. Nobody else's house, our pastor Ma's house. He visited the house in Ainavara. And her mother, her mother-in-law, 
she's a she's I have heard I never had the uh, uh, opportunity to have her hospitality because I heard about many people who have hospitality. So always when the workers come, she would show a lot of hospitality, love and hospitality. So this worker, on his way back from Parambur, he went to this house, their house also. I heard it from the worker himself. But Sundar Mahal said, told this to me. When he came, Pastor Adnye, Parambur work, have you finished? He said, yes. Uh, anything else? Uh, he put it in, uh, uh, put it in such a way, on the way, when we are coming back, I just went there also. Pastor Sundaram asked him a question. Tell the truth. Is it when you are coming back, you wanted to go there, or even when you are going to Parambur, you had a plan? Tell the truth. Paravala di Patitandia, Ilang and the Parapurumbo de one like a plan in the chair. My dear brother, my dear sister, since we had such a wonderful training, today that servant of God has got one of the biggest churches in Chennai. Praise God, we had these opportunities. You also got almost the same type of opportunities. Your life must be a sacrifice to the Lord. Your Christian walk must be a sacrifice to the Lord. Even don't tell the truth make other, to make others believe a lie. You think that you are speaking, oh, it's a truth. That's why in the court they say, the, only the truth, I speak the truth, only the truth, nothing but the truth. That is many a time people speak truth with a hidden agenda. Something else is hidden inside. It is abhorring. My dear brother, my dear sister, I love an open rebel. I depend on, I trust an open rebel. Then a friend with a hidden agenda. It was a statement by somebody I don't remember. My dear brother, my dear sister, your Christian life must be a sacrifice. A Christian life, a chaste life, undefined, undefined, undefined. I was a Sunday school student, but I never had a girlfriend in the Sunday school. No girl was a friend to me. I was free with everybody. I was not even saved. I worked in co-ed schools. I praised God for the grace that was bestowed on me. I was also a servant of God. Many of you may not know what is 65. But I know what is 10, what is 20, what is 30, what is 40, what is 50. Now I know what is 60. My dear brother, my dear sister, you can't say that you don't understand this. Well, you may not understand this because you haven't seen 60s. But don't say that you don't understand this. We have seen six, uh, 16. I have seen 16. I have seen 21. In many ways, you are blessed to have a servant of God. If you say sports, I was a sportsman. If you say cultural, I was in culturals. I was an intercollegiate uh, chairman, president. If you talk about working, I was working. If you talk about helping a pastor, I was helping a pastor. If you talk about Sunday school, I was a Sunday school teacher. If you talk about youth, I was a youth leader. If you talk about assisting a pastor, I was assisting a pastor. Before the Lord could give me this church to lead, probably every area of ministry, the Lord has trained me. When we started the church in Anandnaga, I used to spread the mat. Christian Hebs used to help me. 
Today I am helping many people. How beautifully we can spread the mats. How can we spread the chairs? So I started the ministry spreading the mats. Pasting the wall posters on the wall. I have done it. Every area of ministry. To encourage you I tell you. In every area of ministry be honest. In every area of ministry be honest. When I talked to my pastor, I cannot imagine I had something else in my mind. I told my pastor something else. I cannot imagine. You are very like this point. I can spend the whole time for this one point and finish it. It should be without blemish. Otherwise, you are not. Your life is not at all acceptable. Your Christian life is a waste. Your Christian life is a waste. With all lust, with all worldliness, with all blemishes, you are not acceptable to God. So Paul says, your faith, that's not just believing in Jesus. The literal meaning is, your Christian walk, your Christian walk should be, or your religious lifestyle or Christian walk must be acceptable to the Lord as sacrifice and a service. Of your faith. That should be the worship. Your Christian life should be the service. The service here it means. It is the worship. It is the uh, offering a sacrifice. It's not just killing. Every rites and rituals that is connected with a sacrifice. So here that word service. That we say morning service. Evening service. Service means aradhanai. Not just soluhai. Aradhanai. Your life is the bali and aradhanai. Your Christian walk is the life, uh, Christian walk is the sacrifice and oblation, sacrifice and service. And Paul says, if I am offered upon it, upon your life, your Christian lifestyle, I joy and rejoice with you all. Glory be to the Lord's holy name. Number two, Hebrew chapter 13, verse 15. By him, therefore, let us offer, let us sacrifice the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our life. So what is the second sacrifice? Praising God continually. Praising God gently. They say there are two types of praises. In the book of Hosea, it is the uh, oxen of our lips. It is the oxen of our lips. Uh, Hosea 14, to take with you words and turn to the Lord, say unto him, take away all iniquity and receive us graciously, so will we render the calls of our lips. There it was actually, many people say that's the praise offering of calls, this is the praise offering of fruits. But these are two different things. They are two different things. One is, when they come back to God, they confess their sins. They confess their transgressions with the heart rent, with a broken heart. They come back with weeping and lamenting. They give the words of their mouth. Lord, be gracious unto us. Lord, accept us. There it says, the cause of their lips. in Kalei. That's more for a type of a repentance. Reconciliation with God. That's essential. But we are saved. We have become the children of God. And our sacrifice. It is the fruit of the lips. With all gentleness. Feeling the presence of God. Looking into him. Praising him continually. It's not that stodram, 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 stodram. It is not that stodram. I have been to a place. I saw the leader saying something. I could not hear him. There was no ma microphone. Immediately there were a few people sitting in front of him. They all said, tiram, 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 tiram. I really didn't, really, I'm not joking. Really, I didn't understand what they mean by that tiram, 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 tiram. Then I asked somebody what they say. Why they say tiram, tiram, tiram? He said, no, the leader was giving a statement to praise. And they all are saying, stotram, stotram, stotram. Because they got used to it. Very, some people in a uh, sleepish way. Tiram, 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 tiram. Tiram, 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 tiram. It's not that. 
What is praising God continually as a sacrifice? Let come what may, whatever the situations may be. My dear brother, my dear sister, one of the books I allowed, I love very much to read is The Imitation of Christ by Kempis, Thomas Kempis. Anybody has read that? Imitation of Christ by Thomas Kempis? No one? It's really surprising. And if my memory is right, Pastor used to have that book next to the Bible, maybe till his old days. The book I have read again and again, and I'm reading again, is The Imitation of Christ by Thomas Kempis. The Lord permits adverse situations in our life. Thank God for God permitting adverse situations in your life, because that's the time that you can be drawn closer to Him. That's the time that you can be drawn closer to Him. My dear brother, my dear sister, praise Him for all your adverse situations. That's the time that you can be drawn closer to the Lord. You need God's assistance then. You need God's support. You need God's guidance. You want God to speak to you. You want God to give a solution. You want God to interfere. You want God to save you. You want God to redeem you. You want God to bring you out of that situation. You seek God more in adverse situations. Praise God. God has given you adverse situations that God could come nearer to you. My dear brother, my dear sister, it had been, there is no storm, there is no uh, waves. If the wind and the waves were not contrary to the disciples, they could not have seen Jesus coming to them, walking on the water. That would not have never taken place. There were winds, there were waves. They thought they could not reach the other shore. All their efforts are proved futile. There they could see Jesus coming to them, walking on the water. So praising God continually means whatever the situation may be. Praise God for adverse situations. Praise God for good times. Praise God for nights. Praise God for day. Give a gentle praise to God. That's a sacrifice. That time it will be every sacrifice will have pain in it. It will be painful. You are cut into pieces, skin. That's the time your skin. That is an adverse situation. Whether I praise God or not. Where I can praise God or not. Take care for nothing. Can I praise God? I'm skinned. My nature is seen out. My flesh is seen out. Your flesh is seen out. Where you could praise God or you will grumble. Will you be angry? Will you be hurt? This morning message is a very deep one, but I do believe for the last few weeks continue, the Lord is speaking to us for our day-to-day -day practical Christian living. It's very painful to praise God at all times. And Paul and Silas were thrown into the prison for none of their fault, for preaching the word of God. They were scourged. Their legs were put in stalks. They could not move to the left or to the right. Sleeping on the ground with the back that was torn by the stripes. Praising God, that's an offering. Singing unto the Lord, that's an offering, that's a sacrifice. A sacrifice that is acceptable to the Lord. What is the sacrifice that is acceptable to the Lord? When you can praise Him continually with the fruit of our lips. And number three, Romans chapter 15 verses 15 and 16. Romans chapter 15 verses 15 and 16. Nevertheless, brethren, I have written the more boldly unto you in some sort as putting you in mind because of the grace that is given to me of God, because of the grace that is given to me of God, that I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles. Here we can say to the unsaved, that I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God, ministering the gospel of God, that the offering up of the Gentiles, the sacrifice up of the 
unsaved might be acceptable being sacrificed by the Holy Ghost. What does it actually mean? This passage also may be difficult for immediate understanding for some of you. Here Paul says, uh, I have written the more boldly unto you in some sort, as putting you in mind, keeping in my mind, because of the grace that is given to me of God, a grace is given to me of God, I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles. It is God's grace, God's calling, God's anointing, that I should be the minister of Christ to the Gentiles, or to the unsaved people. Those who have heard about the truth, that I should be a minister of Jesus Christ, ministering the gospel of God. What do I do? I am ministering the gospel of God. What is the gospel of God? Jesus is the salvation. Jesus is the way of salvation. Jesus is our healer. Jesus is our deliverer. Jesus is our redeemer. Jesus loves us. I tell the gospel to the other people. Jesus can heal you. Jesus can deliver from demonic oppressions. Jesus can deliver you from uh, witchcraft activities. Jesus died for you on the cross. The gospel of God, that's the good news of God. That's the good news of God. In the name of Jesus, you've got blessings. You've got healing. You've got deliverance. That's the good news of God. So ministering the gospel of God, that the offering up of the Gentiles, offering up means it's brought to the altar. It is brought to the altar of the Gentiles. Now what is brought to the altar? Brought up, it is acceptable to God. Brought up means it is brought to the altar. <coughs> it was cut, it was killed, the blood was shed, it was skinned and it was brought up. Brought up means it was brought to the altar. It is brought to the altar. Now what is the sacrifice here? Number one, our Christian walk is the sacrifice. What is number two? Number two is our praises in all time. At all time is a sacrifice. Number three, what is the sacrifice? Unsaved souls, Gentiles. Paul says, I am ministering and bringing souls to the altar. Not any Tom, Dick and Harry. Souls that can be brought up to the offering, tested and pruned, without blemish. Their sins being forgiven, acceptable to God. Their life becomes acceptable to God. Our life is acceptable to God. And the believers we bring are the Gentiles we bring to the altars, acceptable to God. And Paul says, the Holy Spirit is offered on those sacrifices. For the life of the believers to be a sacrifice, the apostle is offered as a sacrifice, offered on the sacrifice. The servant of God is offered on the sacrifice. And when he brings Gentiles to the altar, the Holy Spirit is poured upon them. The Holy Spirit sanctifies them. They are without God, without hope. The third sacrifice that we have to sacrifice, we have to bring the unsaved people to the altar. You have to endeavor. Without sacrifices, we cannot have atonement. We have to make sacrifices. Our life must be a sacrifice. In all situations, our praise must be a sacrifice. And also we must bring souls as a sacrifice. Must I go an empty hand to meet God? You cannot come into the presence of God empty handed. In the New Testament, coming into the presence of God with the sacrifice, what is the sacrifice you can bring? You have to bring Gentiles. Gentiles means those who are not Christians, those who are not in faith. Otherwise, you are not making this sacrifice. If you are not making this sacrifice, you cannot have atonement with God. Every sacrifice is not just giving a padayal to God, it is to make one with God. You are 
you are fulfilling god's requirement in life every sac- every sacrifice is a god's requirement my dear brother my dear sister i love to show you a powerful bible passage so one of the commentators says the gentiles converted by him by paul and dedicated to the service of god they are not only converted and those gentiles dedicate their service to the lord when they are converted by him and dedicated to the service of god all his sacrifices and oblation they are his sacrifices and oblations what are your sacrifices and oblations what are your sacrifices and oblations my dear brother my dear sister a boy who was just selling cinema tickets in uh, in black given into liquor even engage given into all vices to that slum sister went and took the sunday school that boy was a sunday school teacher when we started the ministry here the boy started attending the church with all pokey pokey corners when he that converted and he has become a servant of god that is the sacrifice he has brought that is the sacrifice we have done a man from a hindu background with a philosophical outlook maybe as they say a caste hindu came here with queries he got into a faith life his faith became strong he becomes a servant of god that's a sacrifice i have brought to the altar so here the commentator puts it like this the gentile converted by paul and dedicated to the service of god are the sacrifices and oblations that paul has brought so what is the sacrifice and oblation that you can bring bring some gentile some unsaved person to the lord and help them to the extent they will grow in faith and they will become soul winners they become soul winners you are married you have got a daughter you are very happy the day that a daughter is born or a son is born the days are passed by you are not satisfied with that you want to see the daughter get married that son gets married you are not satisfied the daughter get married or the son get married you want to see a child born to them you want to see a child born to them it is not enough that you bring somebody to christ make sure they become parents make sure they become pray that is the christian walk that is the christian lifestyle my dear brother my dear sister it's a very simple uh, many years back i went to a general convention of full gospel pentecostal church and before the convention started one pastor came to me he had come from chennai he asked me ayya you remember me i said i don't know He said, "Aya, only in your meeting I got saved." I said, "Praise the Lord!" When you are conducting the uh, uh, Saturday prayer, I received the Holy Spirit. I said, "Praise God!" And number three, he said, "You only baptized me." Oh, I'm very happy. And he, there are a few believers who had come with him. Now I'm doing the ministry, and these are our church members. I went to the dais. Uh, a pastor who had given baptism to me he was one of the branch pastors of the church he was sitting there i was feeling very shy to stand before my pastor and preach in that convention but i opened up my first statement the first day in that convention four generations are here i am happy about it the pastor who baptized me is here and the pastor whom i baptized is here and the believers whom he has baptized are here 
so we have four generations here we have four generations here my dear brother my dear sister i went to chengalpet the president of the pastors fellowship said ayya only through your meeting i came into the lord you only baptized me my dear brother my dear sister we should serve in such a way servants of god are produced i took vbs and the students in my vbs they are international preachers not one person my dear brother my dear sister yes sacrifice that you bring souls to the lord and see that they become soul winners you bring souls to the lord and see that they become soul winners that is a sac- that's a painful there is a divine healing ministry this afternoon that you have to go you have to talk somebody you have to plead it's not just the boom ba come they won't come it takes time you may have to take an extra effort my dear brother my dear sister your life number 2 your praises and number 3 your ministry not ministry soul winning soul winning i love to show you one passage isaiah 66 verse 20 isaiah 66 verse 20 and they shall bring all your brethren for an offering unto the lord out of all nations now just imagine they shall bring i just put some names joe shall bring vino shall bring your brethren there it talks about the backslidden people but even we take it for gentiles they bring those are outside the commonwealth those are outside jerusalem so joe shall bring vinod shall bring your brethren for an offering unto the lord they are bringing a sacrifice what is the sacrifice joe can bring a soul outside jerusalem a backslidden believer who has gone to babylon who has gone back to the world are as paul said a gentile joe shall bring that brother as a sacrifice vino shall bring that brother as a sacrifice as an offering hello how many have you brought an offering today then immediately don't touch take a person say yes yes i have brought an offering you have to bring those who are outside the commonwealth as an offering is not 10 paisa 20 paisa is not 10 paisa 20 paisa brother sister what is the offering they shall bring jo shall bring we not shall bring your brethren for an offering they are as an offering unto the lord out of all nations out of the gentiles out of all nations out of gentiles those are given into drunk those are given into liquor those are given into worldliness those are given into idol worship those are given into atheism all nations we know they will bring people from all nations is not only the idol worshipers is not only hindus drug addicts may be there corporate people may be there professionals may be there business people may be there uh, rug pickers may be there all nations how beautiful this verse is and they shall bring all your brethren for an offering unto the lord out of all nations how will they bring upon horses they have asked joe say i bring only my family on horses i am just showing the bible brother upon horses upon train in train on rails from batabira upon horses and in chariots there's another red car what 
Vin- uh, Vivek from Mulakade. Not just bringing your family. People from all nations. That's an offer you can bring. They bring them in horses, in chariots, and in litters. Anybody know what's a litter? You have to bring people like that. In litters means palanquin, uh, pallak, pallak. People in nation, Gentiles. Gentiles from GKM colony. Bring them in Pallak, sister. In Pallak. Coax them. Talk to them. I don't know how many have you read this verse here, dear. They shall bring people as an offering to the Lord. Arya, come empty handed. They bring them on horses, in chariots, in Pallak, and upon mules. Some vehicle, mule, Kover Kalade. And upon swift, swift pare potrikapa. Upon swift beasts. So he must have a high speed vehicle. Swift beast, bring them. Very beautiful. You know what's happening? Bring them to my holy mountain, Jerusalem. They are a nation. They are Gentiles. Bring them to the church. Bring them to my holy mountain. Say the Lord, as the children of Israel bring an offering in a clean vessel into the house of the Lord, as uh, as an Israelite. In a clean vessel, he is bringing an offering to the Lord with all holiness. As an Israelite who rushes on as an Israelite will bring an offering in a clean vessel to the house of the Lord. How reverentially, how dutifully, he can't come empty handed. So he will bring the offering in a clean vessel. To the house of the Lord. As he would bring an offering to the house of the Lord in a clean vessel. Bring the people in nations. Bring the Gentiles. Bring those who are outside the commonwealth. Those who are backslidden from the church. Bring them back to Jerusalem. To the holy mountain of the Lord. Upon your houses. In your chariots. In palanquins. Bring them. In one translation it is said, in the royal chariot, not an ordinary chariot, be on mules, on swift beasts, whatever the beast, it is translated in Tamil, whatever the possibility, bring them, how do you bring them, as you bring, as an Israelite would bring in a clean vessel a sacrifice to the Lord. Otherwise, you are coming empty-handed to the Lord. You are coming into the presence of God empty-handed. Every believer. My dear brother, my dear sister, I tell you something very interesting. We got a copy of the Bible, kindly turn with us to verse 21, 66, 21. If, anybody, if you can flash it, do it. Isaiah 66, 21. And I will also take of them. Take of the Gentiles Vinod has brought. Take of the Gentiles Joe has brought. Take of the Gentiles Vivek has brought. Gentiles are from the Gentile nations. The backslidden people. Those were cast out. I will, God will also take of them for priests and for the Levites say the Lord. Brother, sister, you are bringing souls to the Lord and out of them there will be pastors. Oh, lift up your hands and praise God. Lift up your hands and praise God. You are able to bring a, a rug picker to the church. You are able to bring a drunkard to the church. You are able to bring a prostitute to the church. A slave trader to the church. A sex trader to the church. You are able to bring an atheist to the church. 
I tell you, out of them, those who want this anointing upon you, kindly stand to your feet. That you should become a soul winner. You'll be able to bring souls to the Lord. The anointing of the Lord shall come upon you. I'll, I'll want to pray for you. You're not going to come empty-handed into the presence of God. The Spirit of the Lord is speaking to you. Even those are in the cabin, if you want to make a commitment, you can stand to your feet. You are bringing souls into the very presence of God, to the mountain, to his holy mountain at Jerusalem, to the church, to the fellowship of the saints. Not just to call me into the very presence of God. As an Israelite would take the offering in a clean vessel, we are bringing them on horses, in chariots, in, pal in palanquins, on swift bees. You are bringing them into the very presence of God. And out of them, out of them, <laughs> there will be evangelists, there will be pastors, there will be missionaries, there will be prophets, there will be martyrs. Uri namahara bahara bahara Uri namahara bahara 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 The anointing of the Lord is coming upon you. The anointing of the Lord is coming upon you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the Old Testament, the bees were the shadow of the sacrifice. Hallelujah. Jesus became the substance of the sacrifice. They both were the physical sacrifices. Today we have to make a spiritual sacrifice. Our very life is a sacrifice. Our very life is a sacrifice. Praising God continually is a sacrifice. Hallelujah. Bringing the Gentile, bringing the backslidden people, bringing them those who are without the commonwealth of Israel, bringing them to the holy mountain. The holy mountain that is in Jerusalem is a sacrifice. Otherwise you can't be have an atonement with the law. Otherwise you can't be pleasing God. You have to bring the sacrifice. You have to bring a sacrifice. You can't come into the presence of God empty handed. The anointing of the Lord is coming upon you. The anointing of the Lord is coming upon you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He will help you. He will help you. The anointing will help you. Hallelujah. He will take you in his hand and he will use you mightily. He knows the commitment that you are making. Your house, hallelujah, your chariot, your car, hallelujah, will bring souls to the holy mountain. Thank you, Lord. I am committing myself. Hallelujah. Must I go empty hand? Must I seek my Savior so? Not one soul with me to greet him. Uri Shanakara Lala Di Namara.